appeals court said Tuesday that the Obama administration can't tell cable companies what to charge for their infrastructure known as the Internet pipes. Why is this such a big deal? I've got former FCC Commissioner Robert McDowell joining me now from Washington. Uh, Commissioner, why would the government want to tell cable companies what to charge for their product in the first place? Well, that's a very good question, uh, and just for the record, I voted against this rule when I was a commissioner <laughs> back in 2010. But um, the, the ostensible argument would be to protect consumers, that uh, somehow that Internet service providers would have an incentive uh, to discriminate in an anti-competitive way against various forms of Internet content or applications or try to charge some people a certain amount and play favorites and charge other people a lesser amount or nothing at all, perhaps. Um, that actually never happened. Uh, the FCC never conducted a market study uh, to look at this, to diagnose whether or not there was any problem that needed a curing. Um, and so uh, the court then now, for the second time, has ruled that uh, the FCC does not have the authority really to do what it did, although there's little shred of authority that it, the court has left behind. Uh, okay, so it's the second loss, second loss in court here for the FCC on yep. this issue. Who benefits most from this ruling? I think consumers do, actually. So I think it's best to have an unfettered Internet. It's best to uh, allow the Internet to be governed through what we call the multi-stakeholder model, which is a non-governmental model. There are plenty of consumer protection laws on the books, antitrust laws, state and federal laws already on the books that should Internet service providers act in an anti-competitive way that harms consumers, the government can still come down on them like a hammer. Uh, so we don't need a new body of law that would uh, take years to, to litigate again and be tested in the courts as to yeah. what it actually means. And as you pointed out in your op-ed this morning, and I'd point everybody to this in the pages of the Wall Street Journal, Thank there's you. also, an, in, the there's also a, an international threat here that the UN may want to regulate the Internet too in the coming months. But Commissioner, uh, I just want to focus you back on the FCC. What should this new chairman, Tom Wheeler, be focusing on, if not this so-called net neutrality? Well, he has a lot of other things in his plates that aren't related to net neutrality, like getting more spectrum or radio waves into the hands of the, the consumers of mobile broadband services and a lot of other things. So he'll consider all of his options. He could try to appeal to the full Court of Appeals uh, here in Washington, uh, the, what we call an en banc. There are a lot of fresh new judges there who were the subject of the, uh, the nuclear option uh, controversy in the Senate a few weeks ago. He could try to appeal to the Supreme Court. He could try to classify uh, broadband Internet access as a phone service, essentially, therefore triggering old phone monopoly laws, which are antiquated. That would be a horrible idea, but he could try to do it. <laughs> or he could do something more positive and constructive, which is to assemble consumer protection agencies and the Federal Trade Commission and other agencies at both the federal and the state level uh, to figure out what, uh, what's in the government's arsenal to use against uh, Internet service providers if they misbehave. Okay, well, it's a long list. Former FCC Commissioner Robert McDowell, thanks so much for joining thanks for us. Me.